8.7, equation of motion. 16, knowing all the forces exerted on an object, all the forces exerted on an object, gives you the direct information about which aspect of the object's motion. What would you say is the answer to that? Well, it should be the object's acceleration, right? Because of this equation, if we know all the forces acting on an object, then we can know the object's acceleration. 17. What condition allows you to convert the relationship this, right, some of the forces, um, equal to the time rate of change of the momentum, what condition allows us to convert this to this? What is the condition? Well, let's have a look here. So, we know that the time rate of change of the momentum of an object is equal to the sum of the forces acting on that object. Okay? So, the way that we can convert this to this more familiar one, sum of the forces equals ma, is because we assume that the inertia of the object is constant. Okay? So, dp dt becomes d. What is p? It's mv. And as long as our mass is constant, we, we take it out of this derivative, and we have m dv dt, and dv dt we know is a, our acceleration. Okay? So as long as our mass is constant, we can convert from there to there. State Newton's three laws of motion in your own words. Okay? In your own words. See if you can quickly write that down. Pause the video. Just try it, please. Write it down. And then see how it compares to what the, what the literature says. Okay, so let's go and check. Newton's first law. So we're considering an inertial reference frame. In an inertial reference frame. Any isolated, remember what's isolated? Isolated object means what? It means there's no momentum transferred across the boundary. There's no momentum transfer. There's no force uh, acting um, on this object. Okay, no, no net force. No net force. Right? So the sum of the forces equals zero. It's isolated. Isolated. Isolated means there's no momentum transfer. The sum of the forces acting on this object is zero. Okay? So in an inertial reference frame, an, any isolated object at rest remains at rest. Any isolated object in motion keeps moving at a constant velocity. Okay? Now the Newton's second law. The vector sum of the forces, this guy, the vector sum of the forces, sum of the forces, is equal to the time rate of change in the momentum, dp dt or m a so the resultant force the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration okay but remember like we said in uh, a few minutes ago this guy is only valid when your mass is constant okay third one newton's third law expresses the law of conservation of momentum. 
Okay. Whenever two objects interact, they exert on each other forces that are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay, so even a little bzz, a little B, right? I don't know how to draw a B. Flying, and then it hits a massive bus. As they interact, they the the force that the bus exerts on the B is the same as the force that the B exerts on the bus. Okay? I hope that you're clear about that. The accelerations are different, but the forces are the same. Okay. Alright, let's stop here and we'll see you in the next one.